All right, I think we'll get started. Uh, anyone that joins in late will um, figure it out. Um, I am going to put my mask down a little bit because we did a trial uh, and it's hard enough to understand me without the mask, let alone with the mask. So we're going to give it half a shot. So uh, look, thanks everyone for joining us uh, virtually today um, at the AIC. Uh, we'd like to do it in person, but obviously there's some restrictions means that we can't. So uh, I'm Luke Trusking, the Managing Director of the Auto Innovation Centre. And um, yeah, we just want to show you a quick walk around today. So um, here we are, we're starting in the training and conference facility. Um, this is co-located with the Australian Automotive Aftermarket Association. Uh, it's used by industry, it's available for industry to use. We have webinar capabilities, we have a, a conferencing function, so you can run training courses up here as well. Um, dividing more, lots of flexibility. Uh, it's important that we have this sort of area to network with the industry. The best bit about it though, is it overlooks the AIC. Now the AIC, straight down there, uh, we're gonna walk down there in a second. Um, but what it means, it's a, it's a co nice cohesive kind of gelled atmosphere where even if you're not running specific workshop based or, or practical training, um, you can still have uh, a function or a training session or a, or a meeting up here and it can be catered and you're still close and connected to the automotive, which is just a bit more, um, it's a bit nicer than I can just go into a generic hotel uh, in some ways. But you are also welcome to book a training session, which we do run where people do theory and practice and go downstairs. So um, yeah, so give us a shout if you're interested in any of this stuff, but let's go downstairs and we'll show you around what we've got. So we'll start with our training area. So while we do have a workshop, uh, sorry, testing area, we have a facility in here to air condition climate control where we can do certain types of testing. We have a couple of bits of equipment here. Um, we've got some key test equipment in the AIC. Still waiting to be commissioned, they are connected, but we just have to wait for restrictions to lift before we can get someone in here to commission them. So this is a Rorig 20 VS damper dyno. It's a Scotch Oak dyno, huge amount of power, 20 horsepower, and they'll be running very, very soon for us to use to measure vehicles, but also for anything you guys need. If you need to access the dyno um, of this type, uh, let us know. Uh, next up, tensile compression tester. Um, reasonably standard bit of test equipment that we'll customize. So tensile, uh, tensile testing, anything you want to do, anything you want to break, grip jaws, we can do stress strain, we can do material analysis, stress strain curves. Uh, we're going to use the compression side predominantly for leap and, and coil spring, spring rack testing as well. Um, but 10 ton machine, anything you want that we put in there, we can make a fixture for. Uh, full set of measuring equipment over here. So if you have a part, if you come in, if you're going to use the facility for a test fit, um, we've got, um, <laughs> we've utilised our, our sponsors uh, at Milwaukee. Um, have, we've got a lot of Milwaukee gear in here. Um, there is uh, an electronic torque wrench here, which is not part of the measuring equipment, um, but there's a few of those scattered around. Um, but we, we have a, a full set of measuring equipment, granite slab, um, you know, so we can do, if there's anything you need to check, we can do that here, but, you know, it's just, just to add to the capabilities. We predominantly need it, but it's also available for anyone to use if they come in. All right, skip past a bit of the storage. Uh, the first of our 3D scanners is here. So we've got a Creon Skyline Ace um, scanning arm. Um, amazingly accurate bit of equipment, um, 1.2 meter scan arm, uh, I believe that's what it is. Um, we will use this for scanning any components on a bench. So often it'll be either contract scanning or it'll be individual pieces that come off vehicles. Um, we have another scanner outside for scanning vehicles and big stuff in the workshop, but this one's used to scan items on, on our picture bench here. Um, it also has probing capability as well, obviously. Uh, next up, added in manufacturing room. So we've got three 3D printers. Um, we've got a Stratasys F370 FDM printer. So I think everyone's pretty familiar with FDM. Um, prints, uh, that does really good resolution. So obviously um, your FDM, you, you do see some of the lines in there, but it does really small layer heights, which is great. Uh, multiple materials for that one. Um, we've got the HP, which is a multi-jet fusion printer, prints in color. Um, prints some pretty amazing stuff, pretty amazing detail. So color straight out of the machine, um, these ones here. So, and, and they're quite strong. I think, um, you know, quite durable. They can be, they can, they can bend and squeeze and squish, stuff like that. Uh, and then we've also got the um, Green SLA uh, machine, um, which does types of resins. It does rubberized plastics, does hard plastic. Um, really good detail on those parts, really, really good detail. So um, yeah, any 3D printing requirements you've got, let us know, but in the future, we want to run some training sessions as well. We want to be able to sort of show people a bit about what we've learned uh, and, and utilizing the supplies of the equipment to talk about design for additive and what's, what's possible and what's capable.
Just uh, want to do a quick shout out to GearWrench. Um, got a full pallet of GearWrench tools here, destined for the AIC South Australian facility. We do have a South Australian AIC opening up. Uh, it's co-located with the Precision Buses Brabham Automotive Facility in Edinburgh Park. Um, just waiting on the ability to get across the state border. These will go over there, kitted out with gear wrench tools. Also, Milwaukee Power Tools will be over there. And we've got um, Molnar Hoist in there now, ready to go. It's all painted up, ready to go. We're just waiting to get there. So we'll do another tour of that one, hopefully in person. It would be nice. We'll see how we go. So we're entering the workshop area now. Um, it's about 800 square metres. Um, we use it for a multitude of things. We've got three hoist bays. We'll start at one and work our way back. Um, so as we go through, we've got a couple of bits of key equipment. So the training room's just up here where we were a minute ago. We've got um, ADAS calibration equipment. So this is a Bosch uh, ADAS calibration equipment um, for cameras and radars, systems like that. Um, radar alignment fixtures. We've also got Heller Goodman equivalent. Um, so we've, we've got Bosch and Heller are both sponsors of the site. We have various Bosch and Heller tools. We've got Bosch scope. We've got um, Hella diagnostic tools and Bosch diagnostic tools and power supplies, headlight aimers and things like that. So they've pretty much adorned the facility to show their support of the Australian aftermarket, automotive aftermarket, which is fantastic. And they're only a call away. And I know one of them's online right now who I've meant to return a call to. So I'll call you back after this, John, but they're always on the phone to us working with us to try and help the industry, which is fantastic. While we're in the middle of our fleet, um, our fleet is on our website. So just um, if, you, if you've got any questions, let me know. If you think we've got, if you want to access a car, let me know. Um, but we try to cover the most critical bases. So we've got Ford Ranger PX3 up on the hoist, doing some scanning, about to start testing. Um, current 200 series Land Cruiser. A couple of performance cars, because we all love performance cars. We've got the GR Supra, we've got the Mustang, and we have a GR Yaris coming, which is going to be pretty cool. So anyone who's in the performance game, give us a shout. Um, new Hilux. We've got a whole Hilux outside. It's in the skip. No, it's going to get sold. Um, we've got current Triton. We've got new D-Max, and we've got the 2500 Silverado. Um, I don't know if I missed anything, but um, the D-Max and the Hilux have just undergone a full teardown. So um, basically these were stripped down to pretty much a cab on the chassis. The full rear end, the diff was out, everything was out the back. There's a couple of sticks. Uh, the front, everything comes off that we can kind of take off. Leave the powertrain in for now, but it's not out of the question in the future. If you have requirements or needs, we can remove powertrains. There's enough demand for it. But that got, gets turned into really comprehensive scan data, which we'll show you at the end of this tour. Continental, another sponsor of the site. Uh, fantastic support. We've got Continental tyres everywhere. We use them exclusively for our testing. Um, they're fitted to our cars whenever we do an ESC or a brake test unless otherwise requested. We don't have to test with them, obviously, if you have a particular desire. We find most people are more than happy to test on an OEM equivalent um, size tyre. So starting at Hoist Bay 1, this is our 2500 Silverado. Um, uh, produced effectively by HSV just around the corner, or GMSV as they're called now. Um, awesome tow rig and we need it to be big and bad because we have a big and bad trailer on the back. Uh, big bad trailers, it's about 1600 kilos, just under 1600 kilos, uh, exclusively adorned with Cruise Master equipment, which is one of our um, AIC champion companies. I'll show that in a sec. It's got a Cruise Master four and a half ton coupling. It's got Cruise Master triple independent axle suspension that tows like a dream. Importantly, we can put a 200 series Land Cruiser on here. The heaviest car known to man weighs as much as the moon. We can put it on here and tow it safely all the way to Anglesey, which is fantastic. Um, we have, so the, the next thing I'll talk about, I guess, is all the Hunter equipment. So um, Bursons are another sponsor. So you can see all the sponsors up on the wall here. I might get a bit of a show of that. Um, Bursons are a sponsor and part of them is Precision Equipment who are the distributors for Hunter. We have two Hunter RX45 scissor wheel alignment hoists, absolutely magic hoist um, and with that, um, so we use them as regular four-post hoist, but also aligning. We have a Hunter Hawkeye Elite wheel liner, absolutely unreal wheel liner. Um, anyone who's used bad ones will know that they're really annoying. Um, this thing's an absolute dream come true, and we use it whenever we do, uh, say, an ESC or a brake test. Um, we offer to fit suspension. So this is current D-Max um, OEM suspension. Um, we have, we're just about to convert it back because it's just had um, customer suspension in there for ESC and brake tests. And this is gonna get converted back today and we do a wheel alignment. Um, but we offer that as a service, we do the install. So you can send a suspension, we do the install here, we do the wheel alignment, uh, we ballast it up. We've got um, 1,600 or 1,500 kilos of lead shot bags just over there behind the Silverado on the ground. So we can do kind of any, any ballast that we need to do for the testing. Um, we'll go around to the next hoist bay. Um, 
scales. We try and weigh everything. We've calibrated scales. So we pull parts off the car and we weigh it for anyone who's interested in the weights of components that get taken off the car. Um, over here, I've got my mask back on. We have Aiden setting up the, the steering robot. So this is our uh, fancy little robot toy that steers the car for an ESC test. So um, we'll just think through while he's setting this up. You can see in here, um, say hi, Aiden. Hi. All right, uh, we're still there. We're still good, technical difficulties. Um, so this is a steering, this is a robot controller. This is the robot um, battery pack. And then we have the IMU, which is the inertial measurement unit from Oxford Technical Services. Um, that's the one that tells us what the car's doing um, in, in terms of its translation and its um, three degrees of uh, um, moments. So in terms of roll pitch, your steering robots being put in the car now. So just poke it in there. There you go. So that's, that's get, this is setting up to do an ESC test. Um, again, another RX45 hoist over here, uh, which, which is fantastic. We can pull the wheel liner over for that. Um, while we're here, um, our, our work bays are all kitted out. They're kind of duplicated. Um, Repco supplied um, the majority of the handles for the AIC Vic, but we have a number of top. We have Gear Ranch, we have Milwaukee, and we have Repco. Uh, but there's a full set of roll cap tools in here. Um, we've got tools all through here, everything you need to disassemble a car, pretty much. Um, Milwaukee power tools at every hoist bay, of course. Um, so next to hoist bay two, we have the Hunter, um, we've got a tire changer, we've got semi-auto, I think Adam's online, 34S um, tire changer, and we have a Road Force Elite balancer. Um, again, top end equipment, uh, another example of the sponsors wanting to showcase the best equipment that they've got to the industry. So. Um, this is really premium equipment. It doesn't just spin the tire balance, it actually puts a roller on here to replicate road force. It puts 500 kilos on it. It's the way it's done on the production line when you get a car. And, and um, yeah, premium equipment so we can do our continental tire swaps uh, in here. Also really handy for anyone who's looking for the equipment and, and wants to get training. They can, seem to come in here a lot. We got a bit quick. Oh, that's all right. Okay, um, we will duck in here. So we've got a fabrication workshop as well. Got to have some level of fabrication capability. Uh, we've got a CNC plasma tucked away behind here. Um, 1200 by 1200 Swifty cut plasma. So the, the function of the fabrication workshop, I guess, was about, we need to manufacture components, jigs, fixtures, tools, uh, outrigger adapters commonly. So we need to have a level of capability. Also means that if you come in and, and you want to test fit something or you want to use the AIC, and you get stuck, well, the, the facility's here. Um, reasonably standard, I guess. Um, again, a lot of Milwaukee gear, um, all the Milwaukee gear is there. So um, thank you to Milwaukee and Allison's online. Um, MIG welder, TIG welder, um, stuff to throw little bolts across the workshop that you never find again, stuff to get your fingers caught in. Um, mill and lathe, obviously we've got processes in place, so you're not gonna hurt yourself with these things and, and uh, it's not just gonna be free for all, come and get stuck in a mill. Um, Fab, fab bench, presses, you know, all that sort of stuff. So pretty standard kind of level capability, but we need to have it in here. So it's, and it's awesome. It's great, great fab. Okay, uh, hoist bay three. Um, we have, again, it's kind of replicated, um, all with our wonderful cabinets um, supplied by um, HDR Workshop Solutions in Toowoomba. I'm away from Aiden now, I can take my mask off. Um, Touchscreen computers at every hoist bay. So again, uh, really useful for looking up YouTube videos when you forget how to bleed brakes or something like that. But uh, it's connected to our facility and this will be where you'll log in and you'll do training where you can log in to say, oh, yes, I've used a mill before uh, or something like that. Um, but you know, anything you want to do. Yeah, always handy to have your computer at the hoist bay. Um, this is our Ford Ranger. This is a two post Maha hoist supplied by uh, well, Maha Australia. Beautiful hoist, lives in the ground, humongous hole. Um, but really unobtrusive, it's, it's fantastic. So this one's about to get some scanning work done as well. Uh, and finally, oh, uh, finally we'll, well not finally, um, we'll have a look at what Jack's doing. So Jack's got the Metroscan 750. Um, that one's supplied by High Tech Metrology, um, just in Victoria here. Absolutely magic scanner, um, throws out seven lasers, all the freaking lasers, it, it develops. Uh, amazing accuracy. So it's got this um, seat track, which is effectively the terrestrial link to the ground. And then it sites the um, Death Star or the Jack's holding. 
Uh, and we'll have a quick look here. Jack will throw some triangles down and we can have a look on the computer. So we use this to do the majority of our vehicle scanning. Um, it, it, it gets a huge workout. We develop lots and lots of giga data with this thing. Um, and usually what we'll do is a tear down uh, on the hoist and we'll just keep scanning with this. And, and I want, we'll show you that in a minute, how we develop the data and we add bits back in and we scan components. So you get more of a, the most realistic kind of CAD representation we can of the vehicle. Um, quick, quick one on the AIC champions. Um, so I harp on this a little, a little bit, but everyone kind of needs to be aware. We've got a few of the AIC champions online at the moment, which is great. These companies put their money where their mouth is back in 2015 um, to support the AIC feasibility study, um, well before this was even a thing. And, um, and they're recognised on this board as companies who genuinely care about the Australian automotive aftermarket industry. Uh, and, and they're very close to our heart. So I've mentioned a few today. I'm thankful to say that almost all of them have been customers of the AIC or suppliers to some degree. Um, and, and we talk to them regularly and it's absolutely fantastic. Um, uh, I, I won't list them all out. I think we're going to do a video on that at some point. Um, but yeah, hugely thankful for these companies here. Yeah. Okay, two more pieces of equipment that we're waiting on restrictions to lift before we can um, commission them. Uh, in these acoustic rooms, so nice big acoustic rooms with big heavy doors. It's a little bit of a mess, it's fused at the moment. Um, but this is our hydraulic test room where it will be. Um, three hydraulic ramps, two two and a half tonne and one ten tonne. Um, asynchronous controller from MTS, so big fancy controller. We've got a water chiller outside. We've got a second bed, um, bed plate coming to expand this space. Um, and so asynchronous testing, it can be for tow bars, it can be anything you want to apply a hydraulic load to, either um, up to 10 tonne singly or a dual two and a half tonne asynchronous test up to, I think around, it depends on the load, but say 20 or 30 hertz. Um, so you can run sort of a life cycle on that one. So. Um, this is going to be unreal. We just need to sort of get everything tidied up, get a commission. Uh, we had started the commissioning and we had to shut down or we had to get everyone off site. Um, but we're hopefully coming to the end of that. Numbers are looking good. So, And we've got one other acoustic room, which we'll just jump over this. So this is our electromagnetic vibration tester. Um, so um, 1200 by 1200 magnesium plate on top of here with a 150 kilo payload that can, that can sit on top. Um, this will run super high frequency um, in the Z direction, whatever you want to call it, up and down direction. Um, and it can be used for small components, big components, or whatever you want to do. Uh, again, waiting on commissioning, and we've got to put a big tube before the air's got to come out. Apparently it needs a lot of cooling. Um, so we're just waiting on that one to be commissioned, but you'll be able to fit something as big as a bull bar or a tow bar or chassis components on here and shake it at very high frequency. So um, uh, there's obviously a lot of, tech around the vibration in terms of um, like it's um, power density or spectral, whatever, whatever they call, but you know, we'll, we can cover that off, but just let us know if you've got any questions, but we've got the CAD available of this, so you can make it a jig or a fixture, or you can ask us to do it as well. Okay, well, let's, uh, I guess that's the facility. That's our key equipment. Um, I guess before we duck inside, I should point out that the ADR testing we do perform is ADR 31, ADR 35, so brakes for commercial vehicles, uh, brakes for passenger vehicles, brakes for commercial vehicles. Uh, we do ADR 88, sign with roll tests for ESC, and we can also do ADR 89, brake assist system testing. Um, that will probably expand in time, but they're our key, um, uh, our key service requirements at the moment. We also do customized dynamic testing, so we can do customized brake testing, uh, handling testing, ESC testing, or anything like that with the equipment we've got. We've got uh, also have a video V-Box that we use for data logging, for doing, um, I guess, longer term testing or anything. It's got an IMU and GPS as well. So um, we could do any of that. Um, it's also worth pointing out that we have a fantastic relationship with the state regulators. So I know we have a few state regulators from different states on the line um, now as well. Uh, and it's fantastic that we have this facility we did, we did before COVID uh, where they would come in and we'd all get together uh, and we utilize the AAAA, which obviously has that government relations um, connection and the AIC, I guess, is the technical piece. And it's um, a fantastic relationship that we can use to make sure that what they're expecting and what the aftermarket is delivering are aligned uh, and, and we're all compliant. Everyone's happy with what we're doing. So uh, now I think what we'll do is we'll get, um, I want to get Jack Day, who's our um, 3D specialist, to share screen. 
because we want to show you, I guess, an example of the scan data that we do. I mentioned that we did a full teardown on the Hilux and the D-Max recently. We've done it on other cars. Um, you know, recent cars would be a Series 5 Y62 um, supplied by one of our, another one of our champion companies, Harrop. They just let us have the car, which is brilliant. Um, so we want to show you kind of, I guess, the level of data to expect from us when we, uh, when we do basically offer that data for you. So I guess if Jack's sharing screen now, we'll duck in and we'll, um, we'll, yeah, we'll go in and we'll have a look. Okay. All right. So I think what we're looking at here is the um, is the Dmax scan data. Um, so this is obviously the new Dmax. Ooh, I'm not being filmed, enough. Because I'm falling over. Um, this is our, uh, I guess, our Dmax scan data. Um, Jack's just showing you an example of the exterior at the moment. I think. Mm -hmm. So basically, the entire car scanned and it's post processed. Um, I'm, Um, and uh, yeah, so basically we'll zoom in uh, and just have a look at what we what we do there. We try and break it up to make it as usable as possible. Um, and um, yeah, and, and basically we saw in packs. So we can sell, we try to tailor packs to suit your requirements. So whether you're designing a frontal protection system, uh, a rear tow bar, a rear protection system, a, a body, a service body, a um, a uh, it could be a GVM upgrade even. So we scan um, the control arms and the suspension. So we might just um, turn some bits and pieces off so we can show you some of the details. So this is the rear. So the tub gets scanned off the vehicle um, and it gets aligned to the way it was delivered to us. Um, our standard strategy is that we, we provide the, um, the data as the car was delivered. We don't want to manipulate it. We don't want to say it's perfect. If the tub's not straight, the tub's not straight. If the body's not straight to the chassis, that's what it is. But we are working through individual customer requirements. Say, so if it's body scan, they want it symmetrical. Uh, if it's um, chassis mounted accessories, I guess they want it aligned to the chassis and then the body is where the body is. So I think that's important data to see that offset. So that's an example, I guess you can see the rear chassis was stripped down to, to the bare minimum. Um, and, and you've got all the detail of, of mounting points if you want to make a tub or if you want to make a, a tow bar. Um, I think we'll strip the front off now and we can show you what it looks like when we turn the front bumper off. So again, so bumper comes off, intrusion beams are scanned individually, they can all get turned off one by one. Um, we keep the, um, the, the air dams in there. So for obviously it's very important for cooling on current vehicles. Um, so the air dams are all individually scanned as best we can. So Jack's just progressively turning them off so you can see um, I guess the level of detail that you get when we get right down to the bits we can't pull off anymore. We, we draw the line at uh, angle grinding off the um, bits of the chassis. So we kind of say, if it can be unbolted, we'll undo it, we'll scan it. Um, intercooler comes out, I guess, uh, you know, that's also really important for people who want to do upgrades. Um, and then once we get down to this point, the other critical thing we do, we also provide a lot of photos. So anyone who's bought scan data sees that we've got lots and lots and lots of photos. So it's very important. We understand that it's, it's a bit harder when you can't see the car. Um, but then what Jack does is he post-processes a lot of this data and he puts in those features that are highlighted now, hopefully you can see in like a, a light blue color, they're modeled using the, the Geomagic software that we have um, to provide a really accurate planes and whole details um, for you in terms of de 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 yeah, designing products. So the, um, the, each of the solids that Jack's got there, I'll get you just to hide the scan data so we can see the actual, um, the solids. So each of those solids there is actually represents something. So like the, the internal diameter, for instance, uh, based on uh, like a cheat sheet that we deliver, it will actually mean something. You'll be able to tell from that whether it's a clearance hole or whether it's a tap tile, whether it's an M8 by 1.25 or whether it's an M12 fine, for instance. Um, and we try to make that so you've actually got stuff you can grab. As an IGES file, it's a lot easier to grab than an STL. Um, so I might just show the suspension. Yep, perfect. So this is an example. So any of these key cars that are susceptible to, if anyone wants it, they'll stop. But if it's likely to get GVM upgrades, we will also do um, suspension arm component scanning. So this is an example of stuff that'll scan on the bench um, with inside. Um, if we zoom in on the arm, you'll be able to see that there's really great detail and basically all the data needed for the arm is there if you wanted to design anything. You can also get motion ratios from that. Um, we've merged the ball joints together, anti-roll bar scanned. And we do the same on the rear with the diff housing as well. So you can um, do some analysis on that. Um, we haven't got it switched on here, but we also do the chassis pickup points as well. So you can see those. So you can go into any sort of detail you want with that stuff. 
Um, and then finally, I guess we'll probably show, oh, we got uh, here, underside. So Jack does a really good job of separating the chassis from the body. Although we don't at the moment lift the body, the cab off the chassis, um, uh, we do take tanks out. So I think um, the tank can be turned on and off. The exhaust can be turned on and off. Um, anything that can be removed sort of, you know, within reason down there is removed. And then the tank obviously can be available as a, you get the scan of the floor, the scan of the chassis, the scan of the original tank. So you can have a look at it um, because obviously long range tanks is a bit of a, um, a product offering for us out there. Um, I think we're probably ready for questions. We're getting towards the end. Did you want to show that one? Yeah, chuck that one in. We'll just show just while we're here, um, Jack, another one we did a really comprehensive scan job of was the Y62 Series 5. Um, so that should be popping up now. Uh, this is the same deal, I guess, as the other ones. Again, completely torn down, scanned, um, underbody, above, um, you know, everything you need. If you want to develop a product for that, you let us know and we've got the scan data for it. So, yeah, I mean, um, we are running a bit of time. I don't know if anyone's going to ask questions apart from my mum, um, but I think most of the people online are probably either, either my mum or Jack's mum. But um, if you've got any questions, shoot them through and we'll see if there's anything that people want to know. Yes, so we have a fixture we've designed basically that sets, not basically, that sets the vehicle at right height with wheels off and we can scan it. Uh, I think this is the question you're asking. Um, so we scan it in situ um, to get an alignment and then we pull them out, we scan them on the bench and then they, the software realigns them to where they were. So what you saw there was right height. So it wasn't a full droop, it was a right height because I understand how important that is. Um, and from there, we've obviously got base vehicle measurements where you can figure out how much droop you want from there. Ah, good question. Um, at the moment, um, we're, we're still early days. So while we have opened uh, about a year ago now, very close to a year ago, um, we've had a long time where we can't really do a lot. So we've got equipment that's not even commissioned yet. So we're going to go on top of that equipment first. Um, if you think we need future equipment, let us know. Uh, I guess the, the, the main answer would probably be if there's an industry need, we can service it. And that's part of the fact that we, we are the AIC, but we also are the AAAA. AA AA will obviously take care of the industry. If you're part of the industry, you're part of the AIC, you're part of us, and if it becomes, I mean, that's what's driven the steering robot. That's what's driven a lot of this is what the industry needs. And there was years and years of research gone in to figure out exactly what the industry needs. Um, no, I mean, it was discussed. A, a lot of equipment was discussed. Um, one in particular, like maybe brake dyno and, and, and uh, a rolling road were discussed. There's a lot, like in terms of the rolling road, there's a lot out there. Um, there's just, there are a lot out there. And I guess power isn't what it used to be in terms of, I guess, the majority of our market. Um, we do have access, we do have the ability to access that. And um, if there's a particular project, if there was something that needed, and it has been discussed, if there's a project that needs to access that, we can access that, but probably not enough for us to keep it on site full time. But if you have a need for it, let us know. And we'll, and, you know, we can always build a business case around it. This is being recorded. Um, so it'll be available for you to download and you know, send to all your friends and share on social media, which I'm sure you will. Um, it's only going to go to my mum. And uh, you can see that afterwards. We've got another question. Uh, no bull bar sled test. Um, main reason for that is it's not a legislated test. Um, we do aim to deliver uh, data effectively. Even when we do testing, we deliver data. We don't sort of, we do create a test if you want to, say if you ask for help and you say, Look, we want to just break testing. This is what we're trying to validate, but we're not necessarily looking for the ADR35. We can take partial ADR35, we can take partial, you know, modify it, and we can work with you to come up with something for an R&D purpose, but we don't try to, we don't suggest special tests or we don't sign off from an engineering point of view. That's the main reason we didn't get to the pull bar side of things. But again, we know a lot of our pull bars, we know a lot of the equipment, I guess, is here that we can service, if we can help, we do scanning for that. Um, but, you know, if we get to a point in the road where we need to step in, we absolutely will step in and we'll do that in conjunction with the AAAA to make sure that you know the industry is still alive and it's still and it's still um, working as it should. If you if you have any questions about standard pricing of our tests, um, feel free to shoot it through and I can send you a quote. It does vary a lot. I mean, ESC testing varies from ten to um, say thirteen thousand dollars a test, and it really depends on what we do. Um, it's actually reasonably cost competitive. You know, if you were to send us your suspension from interstate, we, we can absolutely do that. Unless you've got some sort of car that we don't have or can't access, 
Um, but yeah, it, it varies there. And, and um, again, brake testing varies from, uh, I think kind of around four, five, six thousand dollars depending on what we're doing and where we're doing it. Um, we have sand down nearby, which is a great facility to access a lot closer than Anglesey. Um, but uh, if we can do brake testing, but we can't do ESC testing there. We also do lane change testing as well. So the one I didn't We have done training sessions with uh, with some of our partners, our sponsors, uh, and we, we're very much in discussion. We had a discussion about hosting it here purely aimed at people in the aftermarket. So not so much about someone who wants to design the system, but someone who wants to, I guess, modify the system or fit something that's going to impact it. Uh, and again, just waiting until we can open back up. But that's an easy one to run. I did the course myself, and I think it's fantastic for people who are designing um, bull bars, tow bars, bodies, anything like that that's going to get in the way to be able to come in and speak to the experts. And these guys, you know, we know them, they legitimately are experts and they can answer questions, you know, and, and uh, it'll, be, it'll be a brilliant thing. We just got to get it to work. And, um, you know, as long as we can get them on site, we can even do it virtually. And that was always going to be an option even before COVID because you might want to do a training course, you might want to do a session, but you might not want to fly to Victoria. Um, it might be the, it might be the, the uh, I guess, the, the breaking point of whether you come or not. So we've got the facility upstairs to do that. All right, I think we'll uh, wrap it up there. I've gone on a little bit long, sorry about that. Uh, thanks for dialing in if anyone's still online. And um, yeah, as I said, the recording will go out. Uh, email me if you've got any questions and um, thanks for joining us.